streaming and we'll go live in a minute. Hang on, I'll just get that streaming going. And I won't take any questions. We'll just it'll just go live to YouTube and, and Facebook and it'll just take a couple of minutes to come on. A couple of seconds to come on. It'll 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 tell me. So it's just sending out data now, waiting for it to come back. Facebook is live, we're just waiting for YouTube now. YouTube always takes a bit longer to come through. And YouTube is live. G'day guys, this is Justin May, and this is The Shearer's Post. And today we have uh, Russ Davis. And Russ is a world leader in sheep reproduction and works with Siva Animal Health and is involved with a wonderful product called Regulin. Uh, Regulin is lifting sheep production through fertility by up to 20% or more in some cases in out of season joining. And so this is Russ Davis. G'day, Russ. Hi, g'day, Justin. And uh, thanks very much for having me on your show. Yeah, no worries at all, mate. No worries. Great to have you. And it's a, it's great to um, get somebody like yourself to have a chat about sheep reproduction because um, we're coming into a season now where uh, it's out of season for joining sheep. and um, But to join out of season, you get a lot of benefits for sheep that are joined out of season. So tell us a little bit about Regulin and what Regulin does. Yeah, so look, Regulin is a melatonin implant and the great thing, it was actually discovered and developed in Australia about 35 years ago by uh, Werribee Ag, um, a professor, Linton Staples, who's still around. He's the guy who does fox off. Uh, and all the baiting technologies now. And he developed it with his team. And um, it basically, uh, it's an Im a melatonin implant that tricks sheep into thinking that it's autumn instead of, and they respond uh, as if it was peak joining period for them. So it breaks down that uh, seasonality um, aspect of sheep. Yeah. Well, I, as, a, as a sheep scanner, um, going around pregnancy scanning sheep early in the season, I find that there's a lot of sheep early on in the season that are down in production. There's less twins and uh, there's less ewes in lamb. So this sounds like something that obviously can help those early season joiners um, increase that fertility. Yeah, sure. So sheep are a short day breeder. And what that means is basically is the longer the night, the higher the level of melatonin. And the melatonin is the hormone that triggers the fertility response in sheep, but it's not a fertility hormone, okay? It triggers off hormonal um, change, which then says to a shoe, a ewe, and a ram for that matter, hey, it's the best time of, of year to have a lamb or to get pregnant and have a lamb into the spring, so let's go. So it, it, it basically triggers that natural sequence. Yeah. Yeah, oh, well, it's a, it's for for Australia, and I suppose for all over the world, that's a, that that could mean a big lift in production out of season. So, what's Regulin giving uh, these out of season producers? What sort of percentage gain uh, is it giving? Yeah, it's pr pretty simple. Over over kind of a ten year period, you'll you'll see between fifteen and twenty five percent improvement in. Um, land percentages and what what happens is uh you know when you join out let's say the first of march is the start of peak joining period for sheep every month you come away from march there's a reduction in productivity so if the first thing to drop is the twinning percentage so twinning percentage starts to drop each month you go away and then it gets to a a, a, a time where Seasonal estrus kicks in and fertility drops. Now, the confusion with people comes is even though sheep are seasonal, they'll still join year-round, right? It's just that you get this really big dip in productivity and the real challenge months for sheep are uh, August, September. They start to get a bit better but are still challenged in October. November, they're better again. December, they're better again. January, they're better. February, they're better. And March and April and May are peak joining. So Reglan, you it allows you to join 
depending on the breed, but it allows you to join back in October, September, early October, all the way through to the cutoff, really, uh, for commercial use is January, mid-January. After that, they're, they're starting to act normally. You know, we, don't, we don't have to replicate autumn anymore. Yeah, right. It is autumn. Yeah, exactly. So, they, so there's no need to give it to them after, like once that basically Australia Day comes. Correct. So Australia yeah. Day is the cut. And it's really important to understand is that rams are seasonal as well. So when you when you look at rams, is your less sperm is produced per ejaculate. Libido is reduced because testosterone is, is correlated directly to melatonin production, and of course testosterone is correlated to libido. So you know the longer the night, the better. Uh, they don't, it's not that they're shy or they are bothered by the heat so much, is that. Melatonin is is only produced at night, so the longer the night, the increased libido of rams. So we, yeah. So you know when you implant regulin into rams, then you get uh, about fifty percent more sperm per ejaculate. The quality of sperm goes up, the motility goes up, um, and the libido goes up in rams as well. So when you match that protocol with an increased rate of ovulation and an increased strength of ovulation with an increased libido and improved sperm output, that is why you get, you know, a far better conception and more twins and more viable lambs for that so matter. You, you really, if you're going to give your ewes regulin, you really need to give your rams regulin because they're seasonal breeders as well. They, they, they're adjusting themselves to the, to the season. They'll be better in a peak season um, for breeding, but given the regulin, that they need that to, to perform with the ewes. Absolutely. It just matches them up together. So they're both, you know, behaving as if it was autumn. Yeah. Yep. No, that's good. Very good, mate. Um, so is that can you give regulin to a ewe through through the gestation period of a ewe? And does that um, help the help the lamb in its growth? Yeah, look, we're in the early days of this research. So yep. um Roseworthy and Sardi, South Australia, has been doing some work. Um, I've just published a three-year paper and uh, presented that at the British um, Society of Scientists in April, um, where I did a three-year study on merinos, and we were implanting in the final for the final trimester. Um, in my case, we're actually implanting in the second trimester, uh, and overall what we got was a 7% improvement in lamb survivability. Um, in twins only. It has no impact in uh, singletons. It has a bigger impact in uh, in triplets, but it was so random with triplets, it just wasn't a big enough number. Yeah. But it was consistent over three years. Uh, and from that work, then uh, University of Zaragoza in Spain has done a lot of work. So their findings were uh, decreased uh, hypoxia at birth, so which was the same as University of Adelaide, was a decrease in hypoxia, which is what um, kills a lot of lambs. In, and in Zaragoza, they went on to do further work where they measured an improvement uh, in immunotransfer and response in um, colostrum and an increased volume of colostrum. They also measured a, a significant increase in, increase in the amount of fat in the milk. What Adelaide Uni saw in their uh, research, and they're about to replicate this in a 5,000 new trial this year, um, it's underway. So they found a 14% improvement in twin lamb survivability, but their replication number was a bit low, which is why they're doing it again. Uh, Zaragoza had very similar 12% improvement in lamb survivability, heavier gain at, at weaning, weight gain at weaning. Um, and then University of Uruguay also did, have done some work with late trimester implanting. So both Zaragoza and Adelaide implanted in the final trimester. I implanted in the second trimester because I wanted to see how it would go at scanning because of the sheep were already out. University of Uruguay did their work in the final trimester. They were looking specifically at measuring brown fat across the kidneys, antipose fat. Um, and they found a 30% uh, 
uh, increase in brown fat, which is the instant energy lambs get at birth. Now, I say this with caution, Justin, because I work in science and where my project went for three years, we're in the process of doing further research. Murdoch University, or no, correction, the University of WA is doing two and a half thousand years, Dr. Kelsey Poole. Um, Roseworthy is doing 5,000 years. So we are still in the research phase of Regulin as a lamb survival tool. Yeah, yep. very much understood. So that's a, a very good, but a, a, look, sounds like it's a very promising uh, trial period going through now for Regulin to be used um, like that within sheep through, through the gestation period. Oh, look, it's really exciting. It's a game changer. You know, like if it, if it, uh, you know, all the um, proof of concept work has, has shown if it works uh, um, and continues to replicate in the larger field trials as it did in the animal house and the smaller trials, yeah, absolutely. It's, um, it's really exciting. Yeah, awesome. And uh, it could be fantastic. I suppose Regulin is all about increasing um, increasing survivability of lambs, but increasing the number of lambs on the ground for the same amount of ewes um, that you have. So it's a, that, that's a massive game changer in Australia, well, across the world, but in Australia in particular where we are. So um, with the price of land going up exponentially, if you can get uh, use the same amount of ewes to, to have more lambs out of season, it's got to be fantastic for farming. Oh yeah, absolutely. It's um this year it's uh it's not hard to do the maths. A twenty percent, you know, improvement lambs at you know two hundred and fifty to three hundred and fifty dollars a lamb. It's uh yeah, yeah, they're pretty simple maths. Now with um with different sheep breeds within Australia and across the world, do you find that there's some sheep breeds that aren't that that, that aren't good for uh, using regulant, or or are they all is regulant good for all sheep breeds? Can you use it on all sheep breeds? Uh, yeah, no. Regulin is not only is it good for all sheep breeds, it's actually registered for all sheep. So it just acts differently. So in the less seasonal breeds of sheep, you know, a merino, etc., first cross use uh, pole dorsage, you can drag them all the way back into October and uh, and get a really good result. In truly British breeds. Okay, you can only advance the breeding about eight weeks. So you can take them out of March into, you know, mid-January, early January. You cannot, you're not going to get a Texel over a Texel in October. I used to look at each other, regular or not. It's, it's too big a ask to overcome. Yeah. And the other thing that it won't overcome is it will not work unless puberty has evolved in a ewe lamb. So if a ewe lamb has not achieved puberty, then Reglan won't induce puberty. Okay, that's really yeah. critical. And, and is there any way that we can tell that a ewe lamb, because I scan a lot of uh, farmer clients that scan their ewe lambs, and they can. there's a huge variance throughout the year. Um, uh, is there a way, anecdotally, or a, a way that you can tell that a, that a ewe has reached puberty? No, you can't, and and one of the things, but there's some rules that you need to yep. follow. Okay, so one of those rules is is if a if a lamb is born in autumn, it normally won't have its first estrus, i.e., puberty, until the following yep. autumn. I've seen that on the ground. Is it twelve? Months? Yeah, that's twelve months yep. of age. But if a lamb is born in spring. It will have its first estrus in its first autumn, so that's eight months yep. old. So one of the things of why you see this variation is it's very dependent on what month they're born. Because if imagine if a lamb is born in March and it comes to puberty, or it, it's eight months of age in October, it's in the depth of an estrus and it's a ewe, uh, it's a ewe lamb. Now ewe lambs come to estrus one month after sexually experienced ewes. Sexually experienced ewe comes to full capacity estrus in March. A ewe lamb doesn't hit full capacity estrus until April. Yeah. 
And then pub is not like oh, eight months, oh, you know, I, I now have achieved puberty and I can get pregnant. If everyone thinks back to what their puberty like, it doesn't all happen at once. kind of happens over a period of months. <laughs> Okay, yes. I keep working for a period of time and all of a sudden it's just like that happens, that, that happens and then the, the hormonal axis is switched on and puberty is achieved. Yeah, yeah. Now, so, yeah. Sorry, yeah. Let, me, let me just expand and try and get away from those to try and get Roland conception in you lambs. Puberty is weight driven. Okay, but I want you to imagine that there's two types of weight in a ewe lamb. There is muscle and bone and there is fat. Yep. The fat doesn't count. So if you've got a lamb that's really fat and it weighs 50 kilos, but, you know, like 25% of its body is fat and riot, it probably is not 44 kilos in weight. In true weight, which is bone and muscle. Yeah. So it's that bone and muscle weight, that lean meat weight and skeletal size is what triggers reliable puberty. That makes sense. So you don't want to overly. It's really mis. Yep. Yep. You see, I quite often see a massively fat ewe lamb, and I did some white suffix here not very long ago, maybe about a month ago now. They were really fat ewe lambs. And they didn't join. And look, the other thing about about when they're fat is that estrogen is stored in fat, and estrogen is a conception preventer. So, it, you know, if you have elevated levels of estrogen, it represses the ability to produce progesterone. Progesterone is what triggers estrus. Yep. So, if you have fat, if you have fat rams. Estrogen represses the ability to produce testosterone. If you have fat use, then the amount of estrogen elevates and that reduces the ability to produce progesterone so they don't cycle. Yep. So it's, it's, a, it's a problem. It reduces conception. Yep. That's, okay, that's the science behind it. Yeah. So keep, the, keep them, yeah, keep them nice in forward condition, but make sure there's plenty of muscle on them and not too, not too much fat on the ewe lambs. Absolutely, condition score three is the joining yes. target body condition weight. And talk, you know, talking about condition score three, for for a farmer looking to use regulin, how when, yep. when he presents regulin um, to to somebody who comes around like myself who might be coming around and say, "Yep, I'm going to assess you use to see if they're." They're, they're right for regular. What do what, what does a farmer, what sort of criteria should a ewe meet to um, be given regular? Because you can't just give it to a, to every every ewe in Australia. There is um, a certain yeah. type of sheep or type of conditioned sheep that you have to give it to. Yeah, sure. Look, they want to be in two and a half score going forward. Yep. You know, you, you ideally, ideally, I mean, the ideal body condition score is three to join but if you're at two and a half forward you know then you will get good conception for every for every quarter score that you go up right so if you're two and a half and you go to 2.75 the length of the anestrus period is shortened and the length of estrus expression is lengthened okay that's not very well known either by the way but you know, like, so ewes that are really skinny have a really long est an estrus period and a really short estrus period, okay? For every quarter of a score that you go up, you reduce the period of an estrus and you increase of estrus, yeah. okay? So that's why forward plane, a rising plane in nutrition, has a direct correlation to conception. Yeah. Uh, so two and a half score at point of implanting on a forward plane within phase, you'll be at three score yep. and you'll join well. Yep. And so how easy is it to, on these type of views, how, how easy is it to administer? And how do you administer, if you can just explain verbally how to administer the, the pellet, the, um, the regular pellet? 
Okay, now you're probably asking the wrong bloke about how easy or hard it is because I think that I've implanted a million sheep in my career and uh, I've implanted them from 40 degrees hot to minus 23 degrees in China. So, you know, like I've, I've done an awful lot. But the main thing to remember is when you look at the implanter, turn it sideways like a gangster yep. and run it down a line of the ear away from your hand because when you put the needle in the sheep it's supposed to be in the sheep not in your other hand and put it at the base of the ear and squeeze the trigger i find it really simple okay i watch people struggle tell you this story and i shouldn't i had a one of my church managers i had a meeting today and he told me this hilarious story and he goes oh this farmer rang me up and he said bloody regular mate i hate it it's really hard to put in it's a mongrel but I get so many extra lands, I just sometimes don't know what to do with them. <laughs> and uh, and uh, the cherishing manager said, so it's not really that hard to put it in. And he goes, no, it's worth every moment. Yeah. And look, the key to it is, is it, the more you get, the hotter you get, the hotter the sheep get, the harder it is to handle them. Take your time. It's not cheap. It's expensive. Line of the ear, the implants are held sideways. Put it in at the base of the ear. It's squeeze the trigger and pull it out again. There are two needles in every packet. Change the needle every time you change a strip of melatonin. That is 25 regular implants. Throw them away. That'll fall out of the gun and change the needle. Don't try and sharpen it. Don't be miserable. Put a new one on. <laughs> That's good advice. That is really good advice. There's nothing worse than working with blunt needles. <laughs> Terrible. And People do it all yeah. the time. I, I would suggest also to have a second person there if you're administering it for the first time or the, for, for the first few times. Just get a mate with you to to help you out and just to hold the head nice and still because you are going to pay a little bit of money for the for the regular implant and you don't want to waste it. If you're going to do it, do it properly and do it do it once and do it right. That's all I can say. Oh, look, absolutely. Just take your time. It's not a race. Oh, someone, someone famous said that and was in trouble. But uh, it's not – in this case, it's actually not a race, okay? No, it's not a race. You want to do it properly, that's for sure. All right, Russ. Absolutely. I, I know you're a very busy man, so thank you very much for um, uh, talking to us on this podcast uh, tonight. And, um, yeah, good luck with uh, all your work you're doing over there. And um, I look forward to – uh, doing some more work with you and anybody out there who wants to uh, use Regulin, whether it's the first time or not, you can get in touch with me, uh, Justin May here, and um, and uh, I'll leave my details and you can give me a call and uh, that's no worries. I'll take you on a step-by-step -step, uh, journey into get it, using Regulin and using it correctly and getting great results from Regulin. So thanks very much, Russ, again, and we'll talk to you another time, mate. Thanks very much. Cheers.